Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the offseason here in the New York Jets franchise. Now, we have a lot of work to do here in the offseason, a lot of question marks at quite a few positions. And I want to be realistic, just keep that in mind. So the numbers of contracts, as far as numbers go, as far as salary goes, I'm going to offer our contracts realistic numbers. Now, starting with Sam Darnold, he is the biggest question mark of the offseason. Do we sign him to a contract? Now, the fair offer, we're going to ignore these fair offers, and we're going to offer him a contract that he would get in real life. Now, he would be next up to be a big contract guy, so he would probably get at least $30 million. Do I want to give $30 million to Sam Darnold? For now, I'm going to pass. That brings us to Braxton Berrios, the next guy we would have to re-sign. He's been really, really reliable for us, especially during injuries, and then he kind of inserted his way into the starting lineup. So I will try to bring him back on a short-term deal, and I offer him a one-year, about $2.5 million deal. No signing bonus, just salary. The fair offer he wants is three-year, 12.6. I think that's pretty unrealistic for him because I don't think he's that good. But he ends up wanting to play for a new team next season. That brings me to BJ Hill. Now, I traded, traded for him after the season one trade deadline, before the season one trade deadline, and I thought that he was going to be pretty good. He ended up kind of being a dud, though. I mean, he didn't really make a true impact on this defensive line, and I decided to let him walk, so he will hit free agency. But the last guy I want to look at re-signing is Deion Carter. I thought he was very, very reliable. So I will sign him to a two-year deal, and he agrees to that contract extension. Now, looking at the top guys in free agency, you know, a ton of running backs, a ton of defensive guys. This is actually a really good class as far as just overall depth. Every single position has a guy that's at least elite at their position. Quite a few running backs. How about Robbie Anderson, who is now a free agent? Wouldn't that be something bringing him back to the New York Jets? I'm not really sure why he left. Maybe it was just for the money. But how about Baker Mayfield hitting free agency? I did not expect to see him, the former number one overall pick, leaving the Cleveland Browns. I could maybe see that in real life, I guess. But honestly, if you you know, pick somebody number one overall, you usually have a plan to stick with them in the long term. Now, interior offensive line is definitely a need. Now that Alex Mack retired, you saw that in the beginning of this episode, we will be looking for guards and a center. And I'm looking at Connor Williams. He's a left guard. I was really nervous last year running behind Alex Lewis. And I'm going to offer Connor Williams a fair deal here. Now, looking at where guards would make money at about age 25, it would be about somewhere between 10 and $15 million. So I'm going to offer him a two-year, about $11 million a year, and hopefully he does take that. Looking at the rest of our offensive line, I actually am going to stick with Peter Weeks. We drafted him in the second round last year, and he did pretty good pass protecting. His run blocking definitely needs help. But then at center, we have Connor McGovern. Now, he's probably going to be the starter going into this season. I decide not to go after a free agent center and keep him there. But I am really nervous because in season one, he was not what I expected him to be. I thought he was going to be a solid center, but... I had pressures up the middle every single play, it seemed like. Now, Chuma Idoga, we do have to save some cap room to extend Idoga. He is one of the best right tackles in the game right now. And I say that because, man, when he's on the field, Darnold didn't get sacked. I mean, it was that simple. When he played, no sacks. And I really, really value that. So I'm going to get a backup right tackle to protect him a little bit just in case he does get injured because every time we put in George Fant, it was a nightmare. So I will sign a backup right tackle for a two-year, $6 million deal. Now, another position of need, and I'm not going to go overspend here in free agency because remember, we need to have some cap room to try to re-sign Edoga and also Quinton Williams, who definitely both of those guys will be due a big 
contract. They're both young, and honestly, I think Quinton Williams could be the rich, have the richest defensive lineman contract in NFL history. Now, looking at secondary, this has always been a big need for us. We have not got it down. I got to say, we have just not got it down. And I think Levi Wallace flashed, but I think here in his second year, he could have a good season. We definitely haven't had a cornerback that can force turnovers, so we're definitely looking at the cornerback market here. Now, Emmanuel Mosley is an option. He's in his mid-20s, and last year I signed two guys to three-year contracts in in free agency as far as cornerbacks go but now i'm looking at some other guys here and i might want to sign somebody to a shorter term deal just in case it doesn't work out so i go back to mosley offer him a one year about 3.5 million dollar deal to see if he accepts that now jalen hurts is a free agent and if i if i whiff at quarterback here in free agency i need a backup so i offer mosley he accepts Bobby Hart, the backup right tackle, he accepts as well. So now we have insurance for Edoga, and then Connor Williams also accepts. So now we get to phase two, and look at who is signing. Philip Lindsay goes to the San Francisco 49ers. Wow, they get rich there and, and establish this run game. And then Sam Darnold signs with the Carolina Panthers, a four-year about $84 million, and that 33.2 is guaranteed at signing. And you can just see the contract that he got. I was hoping that this game would kind of make it a real life contract because I think, like I said, he would get about $30 million based on two years from now in the NFL. I think that's what he would get. So then, after we uh, see, you know, how free agency is going, I decide to actually go ahead and go after a bigger time free agent now remember i'm going to be realistic with these signings and i will offer them realistic contracts so a fair offer for him madden says is two year 11 million but 11 million dollars a year is probably what he would make in real life at age 27 solomon thomas is a very good defensive line guy and i think that he's a good rotational piece he will probably start right now in rotation with henry anderson so i will sign him to a three-year 30 million dollar deal and he will pretty much round out that defensive line which we've had problems with getting after the passer i'm hoping that he will make a huge impact right away speaking of defensive line quinn williams is due for his fifth year option and you know we're picking that up and like i said he's probably going to be the richest defensive lineman in the nfl come next year i mean just think about the production i mean even versus jacksonville in the playoffs he was the only defensive lineman to have a sack and oh yeah he had three of them in the first half i mean he is a big time player and that game showed me that he's going to deserve every penny coming to him so let's look at free agency and how this one ended. Alvin Kamara goes to the Cardinals. How about that offense? Kyler Murray, Alvin Kamara, DeAndre Hopkins. How about Leighton Van Der Esch going to the Jaguars? So the Jaguars get stronger. The Super Bowl champ signed probably one of the best linebackers in the game today. Jesse Bates goes to the Patriots. And how about Baker Mayfield signing a four-year, $106 million deal to be the quarterback for the New York Giants? No more Danny Dimes. It's Baker Mayfield in New York. Now let's see who else signed elsewhere. And I don't see a ton of big names here that really made a difference for us, but uh, I was looking to see what the Dolphins would do, and they didn't do too much here in free agency. They even have the number one overall pick. So they're picking in the top five for the second straight season. So we have a ton of draft capital here in this draft, and I highlighted my what I want to go after in this draft last, last episode, so if you want to go check that out, it's the Super Bowl and the draft preview show. And I would just want to look at our top, at the top guys in the first round, the top 12. We are picking at number 14, so I'm hoping that one of those quarterbacks drop and we will get our replacement for Sam Darnold as he signed with the Carolina Panthers. So the Dolphins are on the clock, and they go with George Jenkins, the quarterback out of Clemson. 
over Di Roberto. I am surprised they went that route. Marquise Gentry, the cornerback out of Illinois, goes to the Eagles, number two. C.J. Hawley, a good defensive lineman who is an excellent pass rusher. He goes to the Vikings at three. And then how about Victor Dimitrankos going number four? So Di Roberto is still on the board, and the Lions pass on him for the second straight year. They do not select quarterback. I am interested. They are still invested in Matt Stafford. And then Robbie Richardson gets drafted to the Bucks. He gets to still play with Tom Brady. Chuck Woods, the number one rated receiver on the board, he goes to Buffalo. So there is one of our division rivals getting the top receiver in the draft. And then Xavier Storm goes to Pittsburgh. And there is DiRoberto. He goes number nine to the Titans. And now here we are at pick number 10. Now this is where I start to get nervous because two quarterbacks have went off the board and Chance Tyree is on the board right now. The Chargers, they have Herbert. They go offensive line. The Packers, they have Aaron Rodgers, and they also have Jordan Love. I didn't expect them to go quarterback here, but now I get nervous. Do they try to replace Herbert here with this pick? And no, they don't. They go Nick Williams. There's no way that the Chiefs are drafting a quarterback because of Patrick Mahomes, so I am not worried about who they go with, and they go with a right tackle. So that means we found our franchise quarterback in Chance Tyree. I have loved this guy from the beginning. He was one of my favorite guys to play against at Texas A&M running that triple option offense. He was a dynamic playmaker, and man, did he surprise me. He can actually throw the ball pretty well also. He is a late first round talent. He is obviously the most athletic quarterback in this draft. He ran the fastest 40. He was third in bench. And honestly, I didn't really consider anybody else at this pick. Bryant Britt was there, but I have to get my franchise quarterback. If you got, if you have him and you have your sights on him, you can't miss out. So I go with Chance Tyree at the number 14 overall pick, and he ends up being 74 overall. Just normal dev, though. That's kind of disappointing that he's just normal dev, but he's pretty good. Let's see these ratings. 92 throw power, very, very good. His medium and short accuracy is a bit low, but how about that athleticism? Break sack is at 93, 87 speed, 90 acceleration. It's going to be fun playing with Chance Tyree. We're definitely going to have to implement an offense to kind of fit his strengths, but I'm definitely not worried about it. And he is going to be the future of the Jets franchise. We now have a new quarterback. So Brian Britt goes in the next pick to the Cowboys. So either way, the Cowboys probably would have picked the guy who we didn't pick. How about Ethan Brown from Metropolis? He goes to the Saints and replaces Drew Brees. He will be the starter there as a rookie. So that's going to be four, four first-round quarterbacks who are starters for the respective franchise getting picked in the first round. So now we have that second first-round pick. And I'm thinking pass rush here because you can never have enough pass rush. And I did consider uh, offensive line here. But I think that the pass rush talent in this draft is too big to pass up. So I need to get one of these guys. Joe Rodriguez is there. I really like him. But I think that DeAndre Waddle here, he's an early third round projection. But the athleticism here is spectacular. And also the awareness. So I can't pass on him. And I end up drafting him at number 27. And he has the number 21 ranked true talent. And he is good. He is very, very athletic. His pass rush moves need some help. 67 finesse, 67 power, and 69 block shed. But that athleticism is pretty good. High awareness right now, which pretty much bodes well because I know he's not going to be making mistakes out there when he does get on the field. I really like that pick. Now, A.J. Oliver, who I consider with that pick, he goes in the second round, pick number 21. So he fell all the way down. He almost made it to us once again. So I was actually considered picking him if he dropped there, but now I have to go interior offensive line. Now I mentioned before uh, in free agency that I am really nervous about Connor McGovern, and I picked a, a lineman Peter Weeks in the second round last year, 
and I think I might have to do it again. This cornerback class just isn't good enough after the top two, Marquise Gentry and also Brian Britt. There was a big drop off. So I'm going to go with David Monroe here with our second round pick. And he ends up being just okay. 68 overall. Actually a pretty good run blocker though. At 79 run block as a uh, rookie right away. That's pretty good. Pass block power is good. You know what? He's actually not too bad. He just has a lower overall. But I think just working with him. Remember Chuma Idoga when we started this series was 69. Now he's like one of the best right tackles. And he's a star piece on our offensive line. Now we move on to the next uh, round, and I have a couple of guys on my mind here, and I decide to go with Deshaun Purnell, a receiver. I wanted to add another talented playmaker for this offense because remember, Braxton Berrios left this offense, so we have a hole in that number three position. We have Denzel Mims, obviously, Jamison Crowder, but who's going to be the number three? Now I'm going to be looking at adding another receiver in this draft, but I decide to go with uh another guy here on the defensive line and denard kemp is there he is very very athletic and i really like his just overall potential i look at alan farley too and he's pretty athletic but he's 23 years old so i decided to go at denard kemp because he is one year younger and also pretty athletic and he ends up being pretty much the same as DeAndre Waddle, who he picked a couple of picks ago. I think that having two athletic guys to develop as far as pass rushers will be pretty good and a good thing to have on this roster, especially since, like I said last season, there was a huge drop off when Brad Matthews got hurt. You saw that Jordan Jenkins pretty much had no impact. If I can pretty much groom these young pass rushers to be good pass rushers, it's going to it's going to be pretty good because we can rotate anybody in at any given time. Now, here in the next round at pick number nine, I am considering another receiver here. And Carlos Jackson has been on my radar this entire time. I'm hoping that he can be a good route runner. So we go with him. He is 69 overall. Great speed. Great catching. Great catch in traffic. I need to get that route running up, though. But it's not bad to start. I mean, honestly, I, there's no 60s. As far as route running goes, spectacular catches at 79. I think that's a good start for him and a good base, especially in the fourth round. A very good value there. So then we move on to the 10th pick of the fourth round, and I need to go corner. I just have been neglecting it. You know, I go with Tim Jenkins, and he ends up being 68 overall. I mean, we are getting some high overall guys in the middle rounds. And I say high because usually when you get to these rounds, he started to get to the mid to low 60s, and we're drafting some high 60s overall guys still. So we move on to the fifth round here. And one guy that I have been banging the drum for is a couple of running backs. Tom Cobb is a really good back. He's not that athletic, though. I thought he was going to be a faster running back. But I am really, really eyeing up Dwayne Lincoln. I mean, this guy is a power back. But look at the speed. Four, four, three, number two as far as running backs go, and number three in bench press. So you're telling me I could potentially have the fastest running back in this draft and the strongest. There's no way I could pass up on that. Dwayne Lincoln ends up being 69 overall. Excellent speed, excellent ability to break tackles right away he's got great power good stiff arm good trucking good vision i mean what can't this guy do and i think that this guy could and i mean could has a very good shot of being the eventual starter when Le'Veon bell leaves now with our next pick we decide to go kicker and i did not sign zane gonzalez i wanted to sign a new rookie and look who we grab it's chris stops even from the river cats he goes to the Jets now. Welcome. He is the first River Cat we have drafted here in this series. And now we move on to the seventh round where we look at a couple of guys. And I want to just see what we have here. And there's a couple of pretty good guys here. Derek B uh, Birmingham is a really good athletic receiver. And look at this. Another 67 overall guy. I mean, we are not getting the dev traits like we did in the past draft. Remember, we drafted three guys with hidden dev trait last draft. But now we're just getting a bunch of higher overall guys. No more development, though. And then when our final pick, we decided to go Derek Newton. 
I didn't want to take a huge risk here, and there wasn't really much risk here in the seventh round anyway. So I decided to take an offensive lineman just to see what we have. I'm not even sure he will make the roster. So let's recap this draft. I mean, look at this. I mean, we just ended up doing very, very well. To be honest, it was a whole lot of depth in this draft, and we did a good job here at the top two picks. 274 overall rookies. DeAndre Waddle, I think, is going to be very, very good. I think he's got the athleticism and the smart 78 awareness right now to be a potential star. And that's kind of what I thought of Brad Matthews when I drafted him. Remember, he was normal dev. And he actually went up to star dev after a 12 and a half rookie sack season. Carlos Jackson, I think, could be a starter on this team if he works at it. I think he does have a little bit to go, but I think I like his potential for sure. But the guy I think is the steal of this draft is Dwayne Lincoln. Great speed, great, great break tackle, great trucking, great elusiveness. I mean, he can do everything. And honestly, that power is what gets me. I mean, this guy was in the fifth round. He's a fast guy and a strong guy. I mean, it's just incredible that he fell into our lap. Now, let's look at some other guys that got drafted to other teams. No more Tua. They go with George Jenkins. He will be the starter for the Dolphins. Marquise Gentry went with the number two overall pick. He is hidden dev. 96 speed for him. Decent coverage. I was expecting him to be a little better, but the athleticism definitely makes him pretty good. CJ Hawley, who was draft number three, he ends up being pretty good, 77 overall. Victor Dimitrankos is tied for the highest overall as far as defensive guys go in this draft. He's playing with the Broncos. He's going to be very good. I am shocked that they did not go Justin DiRoberto with that pick. They decided to get a leader on defense. But how about Robbie Richardson? 81 overall, great speed, great break tackling. He is an elusive back. He's going to be able to play with Tom Brady. That's going to be a perfect fit. He can also catch the ball out of the backfield. Xavier Storm gets to go to Tennessee or gets to go to Pittsburgh. And then Justin DiRoberto. I predicted this actually in Madden 20. I had it in my Whitetail series that he went to the Tennessee Titans, and he does it in, in 21. So that's going to be fun to play against. Bryant Britt goes to the Cowboys from the River Cats. He is a very good player. Man coverage is 79 right now. That's actually excellent for a rookie. And he also is going to be probably their primary, primary returner. Other guys that went late in this draft, Xavier Gonzalvo from the River Cats, he goes to the Eagles, maybe replacing Zach Ertz at tight end eventually. And then Bam Cameron ends up being a steal in the fourth round. He goes to the Atlanta Falcons, probably uh, going to end up either replacing or spelling Todd Gurley. So other guys coming into this season who are healthy and that got a dev trait upgrade. How about CJ Mosley? He was one of the top tacklers in the NFL. And then I highlighted that Brad Matthews also got a dev trait upgrade because of his performance last season. He is now star development. Now, one thing I noticed about uh, some of these development traits, uh, Alex Hopkins was X factor last year. I think that is fixed now. I think that maybe it, since he was a hidden dev superstar trait the game couldn't really register that in the game i think it's fixed now because after going into like a game or so in preseason i saw that his x factor lit up so undrafted free agents there's always depth to be added to the roster into the practice squad because i like to promote within taylor townsend is going to have a chance to promote to, to compete with the backup quarterback job we actually did not end up signing jalen hurts he signed with the Browns to replace Baker Mayfield. Garrison Garrison. He's a receiver and he's pretty good. And he's hidden dev. 66 overall. I found him in free agency. I like his potential. He could have a chance to make the roster. If not, he'll be on the practice squad. And then we bat we end up drafting a tackle. He will back up actually Makai Becton on the left side. We'll have to see how that goes. I'm not really sure how this offensive line will work this year. But I signed Connor Williams. He's going to be the starter at left guard. I'm excited for this team overall. I think one guy that's going to hurt from this draft is the Michael P. Ryan because we drafted Dwayne Lincoln. But Lincoln is everything P. Ryan is plus. 
and he might lose a little bit of playing time there. Deshaun Purnell, Carlos Jackson, Birmingham, and also uh, Jacoby Beck will all compete for that number three wide receiver spot. I have no idea who's going to win it, but honestly, whoever has the best preseason will get it. So just looking at the rest of our uh, roster, remember we had to have some cap room and the reason why I didn't spend too much money in cap because I have to sign Quinton Williams and Chuma Idoga this year. They're going to both get big time extensions for sure. They're going to be probably lifers with us in this series. And then looking at other positions, Blake Cashman's probably going to be doing an extension. I have not made up my mind if I'm going to extend him. Bless Austin will also be eligible for an extension. And then Ashton Davis is coming up. I think his will be next season, not this one. So that will do it here in the off season. And I am so excited for a new start here at quarterback, Chance Tyree. It's going to be fun to play with a guy that can really move and honestly make plays with his legs. I am really, really excited for that. It's going to be a different looking offense. We're going to tailor that, work on that in the preseason, and then come back for week one against the Bills. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you guys thought of the offseason. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, hey, filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on...